So this last fall, I was fortunate enough to wrap my tag around a deer that I believe to be eight and a half years old. Um, know him as Mini Mag, probably without a doubt, uh, the most uh, documented deer or storied deer that I've ever had the privilege of hunting. And uh, the story for Mini Mag really began um, in 2016. I didn't, I didn't really recognize the deer or anything like that. At the time, I thought he was two and a half years old. And, you know, I've got trail camera photos dating back to, you know, as soon as he started saving SD card or saving photos from trail cameras on SD cards back in 2008 or nine or whenever that was. But uh, in 2016, I threw this deer in a folder and on every farm that I ever, I've ever ran trail cameras, I've always, you know, kind of named the, the deer that are three and a half and older I'll have a name for them, and that's how I kind of save all the pictures. And uh, in 2016, I always have a folder called Up and Comers. Um, and I threw them in this folder, Up and Comers. And little did I know that this story wouldn't come to an end until 2022. And uh, in 2017, fast forward, Mini Mag showed really good sign of being a giant. Um, at that time, I figured him to be three and a half years old, but now he's a mainframe nine pointer. He's got kickers off both G2s, and you can just tell he's a young deer, but he's got the potential to blow into something special. And I don't think we had any encounters with him that year in 2017, but uh, after the season, um, good friend Paul and I were shed hunting the farm, and uh, Paul actually picked up a shed off of him. Like I said, this was in 2017 when I assumed that the deer was three and a half years old. And you can see here, he's got the kicker off his G2. He busted his G4. But uh, I was so excited about this deer to hit four, five, six years old because he just, he had everything. I mean, he's got that 10 point frame. He's got extras. I was just super excited to see what this deer would turn into heading into 2018. It was pretty common for me to get pictures of Mini Mag, you know, throughout the growing season um, in velvet. And uh, typically I would get pictures of them solid, you know, July all the way up until right around Hardhorn. And when he'd go Hardhorn there uh, in late August, early September, he would typically vanish for about a month. In 2018, he actually threw me for a loop and his rack actually shrunk a little bit from 2017 to 2018. So now I'm starting to question like how old is this deer? You know, I was expecting a, a good jump from three to four and he didn't do it. He actually went backwards. So now I'm starting to question how, you know, is this deer older than I think? Is he, is he going down? Um, anyway, 2018 goes on and uh, it was in early November it would be my first encounter with the deer. The rain broke here probably 30, 40 minutes ago. It no more than let up. And we had a couple of uh, couple nice young bucks running a couple does around down here below us. At least the rain's done and it's it's supposed to be gone the rest of the day. So I'm pretty optimistic we're gonna see good deer movement here all day for the most part.
he came right to the right to the base of the tree on a string uh, to that snort wheeze and uh, I elected to pass him again at that time I'm like I don't really know how old this deer is but uh, he just wasn't what we were after that year and uh, anyway that would be my my only encounter with him there in uh, 2018 but uh, I was excited that he was still on the farm um, at this time I was unsure of how old he was I still thought he was four years old I was just really tossed on how he how he went downhill from three to four but uh, you know whether it be wet years or dry years you know sometimes bucks just don't put it on from year to year but uh, I was excited he, he was still on the farm he was very active and uh, you know a deer that I still in the back of my mind thought that he had the potential to blow into something special and so we roll into 2019 uh, don't pick any sheds off them that year which is pretty typical the farm that I'm hunting um, I don't have the ability to put in food so if the winter gets bad and the snow gets deep a lot of, t a lot of times these deer will they'll move off the farm and go to the neighbors where there's more food um, so to not find his sheds didn't really surprise me that much uh, so we fast forward to 2019. Now I'm thinking this deer is going to be five and a half years old. Uh, the only kicker in 2019 is, is uh, the landowner actually had a friend that was a non-resident draw a tag that year to bow hunt. And uh, she politely asked me if it'd be alright if I just gave the farm up for the season and, and let this older gentleman hunt. And uh, no argument there, I mean she's already been more than a blessing to me just to let me hunt on the farm so I, I just stepped aside I had some other spots I could hunt and uh, I stayed off the farm but I did run cameras on the farm during the summer just to see what was in there let the cell cam tell the story and I'm gonna stay out of this spot until the camera tells me I need to be here and sure enough mini mag was on the farm um, and he he grew into what made me confident to say that he was now five and a half years old. Um, started to throw off trash, uh, picked up mass, and uh, really bounced back from that year that he kind of slouched as a four and a half. And so I had pictures of him in velvet, but after that, all my cameras were removed from the farm and I just stayed out of there. Uh, the gentleman that ended up hunting, um, actually I talked to him after the season, kind of asked him how the season went, what he seen. Uh, fortunate for me, he didn't shoot a deer off the farm. Early November, he described an encounter with a deer that I am very confident that he had Mini Mag walk right under his tree. And the, the guy was hunting with a crossbow, and it sounded like uh, Mini Mag come right to the base of his tree uh, before legal shooting light. How he described it is the deer walked straight away from him, and he said once he got to about 15 or 20 yards, he realized how big he was. And by that time, he made the decision to, to try to shoot the deer. He said the deer walked straight away and he never got a shot. So that could have been the, the end of the story right there, but thankfully for me, it wasn't. I already worked way harder than I wanted to today. Had a big log fall down and these deer are forced to kind of come through this 20 or 30 yard gap because of this big washout that ends right here. And of course a big tree fell right across one of the main trails so we just chainsawed that. Gave him a nice lane to come through here and it took a lot more work than we were hoping for. So now we're all sweaty. So the 2020 season rolls around. Um, no different than any other year. I start running my cameras usually around the 4th of July. And uh, so my first card pull, I think, was probably right around late August, early September. And when I checked cards, I found pictures of Mini Mag, and he was an absolute giant. Um, I'm assuming now, at this time, he is six and a half years old, and he has grown into what I would say was probably in the mid to upper 180s, pushing 190s type deer. And uh, just, uh, I mean, he had everything. He had mass, he had splits and kickers and all kinds of junk and palmation. And uh, at that point, I was like, I'm going all in on this deer this year. Um, I don't have anything on any other farm that really trips my trigger. Like, this is the deer I want to hunt. So now I'm really starting to deep dive into, you know, all of the picture history I have of this deer, you know, from the previous years. 
and I'm trying to put together any kind of pattern, any kind of window of opportunity where I might have a good chance of harvesting this deer. I started noticing a few things. The farm that I'm hunting, it really kind of breaks down to what I call the north end and the south end, and there's a big draw in between. It, it's almost like a imaginary line, and a lot of the deer on this farm, they, they're either on the north or on the south, and Mini Mag, for whatever reason, he's stuck to the south end of that farm. It's November 10th today. It's officially the latest I've ever waited to start hunting down here in Iowa since I moved down here. It's been just shitty weather for the first 10 days of November or nine days of November. We had plans of being down here about a week ago, but uh, just super warm. Temperatures up in the 70s, deer just not doing anything. Trail cameras went silent, but we finally got a cold front to come in. So uh, we're back, we're down, we've been hunting up north for the last week, but we're back down south where we want to be. This afternoon's going to be a little iffy with rain and whatnot, but uh, the winds are supposed to blow, the rain's supposed to move out. Hoping for some luck this afternoon, if not, uh, the next few days should be really good down here. Over the years of uh, gathering pictures and history with uh, Mini Mag, I had him pretty much I had him written off to get killed in the south draw and that's where he had been far and away the most active the previous years and uh, that's where I felt like I had the best opportunity to kill him. The only kicker was in order to hunt these spots I needed, I needed to have a north or a northwest wind. It's about 11 o'clock, maybe a little after. Dylan and I just snuck into the farm, uh, bomb proof access into this spot. We're only about 20 yards off a of pasture. And we're expecting, once this rain quits, we're expecting these bucks to get up and move. Up to this point, this is what I had noticed of the deer. So I'd have pictures of Mini Mag in the summer. You know, as he grew through the velvet season, July, all the way until he went hard horn. And I'd have him consistent for, you know, a month and a half, two months of velvet growing. But when he went hard horn, he'd disappear for the entire month of September. Um, not sure where he went, what he did, but that's, you know, for now going on four years of history with him, that's what he had done. Um, and then he would always, like clockwork, he would show up within a three-day window right around October 1st. And uh, sure enough, 2020 did the same thing. You know, he showed back up in October, and typically in October he was kind of hit and miss. You know, he'd, he'd be there maybe a few days, and then he'd be gone, and then he'd, he'd show back up, and then he'd be gone, but the one thing I noticed over the years was there was a window between October 25th and November 4th where he was all over the farm, daylight, and past a lot of my tree stands. So I had it pretty much written down on my calendar every chance there was a north or a northwest wind between October 25th and November 4th, I was hunting this deer because after November 4th or 5th, you know, from trail camera history, it was up in the air. Usually he would vanish for almost close to a month. As luck would have it, that entire window was south winds. If I remember correctly, um, there was 15 or 16 straight days where it was south winds from October 23rd until I think the first north wind was November 10th. I wasn't gonna risk going in there and blowing this deer out because you know, a deer that now is six and a half, which I'm assuming, he isn't gonna tolerate me going in there and, and blowing him out. So I elected to stay out of there. And uh, unfortunately for me, that meant that I didn't get to go in and, and hunt this deer until November 10th. On the way into the stand, I pulled a couple of cards that were real close to the stand. These were non-cell cams. And these cameras have been soaking the entire month of October. And uh, I pulled those cards on the way into the tree um, one of them was within bow range of the tree stand actually that we climbed up into for the afternoon and uh, got in the stand, started flipping through pictures and uh, about puked because Mini Mag, like I had predicted, was daylight in that window of October 25th to November 4th, 5th, um, just a, a silly amount. As I continue to flip through the camera, you know, after that November 4th or 5th, he's just MIA, He's, he hadn't been in there from, you know, the fourth or fifth until we got there to hunt on the tenth. In the back of my mind, I, I knew what was happening. Like, he was he was gonna be gone until December again, which was 
pretty much what he did every year the, the years prior. And so I kind of had it in my head, like I can't sit here and hold out for this deer just because in my mind, I, I don't have any confidence that he's on the farm at this point. I kind of had my mind made up. You know, if I see another good deer, I'm gonna shoot him because otherwise I'm gonna, I'm gonna be hunting a ghost here for the next month. It's a very big deer. I can't do anything with this one here. Is that the six by five? I wonder if I should grunt. He'll come at this other one. It's 10 after 1 right now. We have had an unbelievable start. We've been in the tree for about two hours. A little bit ago we had a beautiful, beautiful three-year-old do exactly what we needed him to do. Wrap this bottom and came right up past us at like 13 yards. About the same time, a big mature deer, five plus, moved across the bottom while this other buck was standing at 15, 20 yards. I threw a grunt, a couple grunts. The big deer never, never heard it. He kept cruising. Meanwhile, the three-year-old turned and walked right under the tree. Bat. As luck would have it that day, we had a pretty much a bonus buck come past us, a good six by five, and uh, just gave me a golden opportunity. Um, just kind of read the script for how I had that stand set up and uh, came up the hill, gave me a beautiful shot at like 12 steps. Dylan was behind the camera, um, excellent hunt. I shoot the deer and uh, there, went my, uh, there went my tag. Came in at the tail end of the rain, got rained on for about an hour. Rain stopped, wind started blowing and the buck started moving. It was an unbelievable sit. We got in the tree about 11 and we were done by two. Just unbelievable. So in 2020, I was fortunate enough to wrap my tag around a really, a really nice buck in Iowa. And uh, that kind of had me hoping maybe Mini Mag would show back up in December and I'd get a chance at him to, with the gun or the muzzleloader. Sure enough, December 6th, I get a picture. I got a cell cam now in the south draw. Uh, the only problem was I was waiting for uh, the muzzleloader season to come in. So I remember I had pictures of him three three or four mornings in a row, uh, right around daybreak, um, getting pictures of them heading through the south draw, heading back to, to bed on the neighbors. And uh, the, the last picture I had of him, he was pretty much heading into the neighbors and then I got another camera um, shooting a fence gap that's pretty close to the neighbor's fence line. At about 10 o'clock that morning, I got a picture of the neighbors walking down the fence line. They're wearing blaze orange and they're all carrying guns. And uh, from what I could tell, they were lining up to do a deer drive. And as luck would have it, that, was, that would be the final picture I would get of Mini Mag uh, for the 2020 season. Just dropping down off of this hill, it's all, all grass all the way around me. CRP grass, warm season grasses. And uh, there's a pond down here. 
So it's just following some trails down into this bottom. I'm gonna work. You can see really good grassy stuff up in here. And I was coming down the hill, I just found pretty good four point. Um, shed hunting would come around, no sign of mini mag. Um, I'm starting to think the worst. No pictures the rest of the year, no sheds off them. Um, you know, I'm still kind of hopeful he's gonna show back up in the summer like he'd been doing for the previous five, six years. And uh, we go at it again in, in 2021, but summer of 2021 comes around, cameras go out and uh, I'm excited to pull cards, go in there, pull cards. You know, now it had been pretty much five years in a row or six years in a row, I got pictures of mini mag all summer and uh, I pull cards and no sign of mini mag. And now I'm, I'm starting to think something happened to this deer. Like there's been so many years now where he's been consistent through the summer for him to not be there was told me that he was dead, laying in a ditch somewhere or on somebody's wall. So I kind of was starting to think the worst. Uh, the entire 2021 season goes by and no sign of mini mag, um, no pictures, no sightings, nothing. Um, so obviously I switched, switched up my uh, tactics and, and hunted different deer on different farms. It's November 13th today. We've had light here for probably close to a half hour now. We've been on deer, covered in deer. As soon as I got light here, we had a pretty good buck locked on a doe out in the CRP. was lucky enough to, to shoot a good buck on another farm um, in the middle of November and uh, went through December, mini mag, no sign of him. Uh, shed hunting, nothing. Any sign of him, I wanted closure at this point. Uh, I just wanted to know where he was, uh, if he was alive, was he dead? I just wanted something to tell me, you know, if this deer's still around because I'm I'm spending an awful lot of time thinking about him and trying to figure out what's going on. You know, it had been pretty much since December of 2020 was the last sign of him. So, you know, he'd been MIA the entire 2021 season, which was just abnormal for him because he was, he was very consistent on the farm all the way back to 2016. Uh, so 2022 rolls around. Um, like any other year, cameras go out in the summer start getting inventory and uh, I won't forget it. JP and I were actually hunting in Nebraska at the time. And uh, on September 29th, right at last light, I'm um, going through cell cams and I get a picture of a deer on the farm in Iowa. And I just, I knew, I knew instantly I recognized the deer but I had, it was in my head that Mini Mag was gone and uh, neither of us, I don't think the first night <clears throat> even said anything about it. Um, and then like a day or two later, I think I got another picture of the deer and I really started looking at him. I'm like, that's Mini Mag. For 690 days, this deer just vanished. No idea where he went, what he was doing. But uh, I was 100% confident that it was him and uh, with uh, the season opening up on October 1st, I was excited to say the least. So, mini mags back on the farm. I pretty much told JP, you know, I'm not waiting for that window of October 25th to November 5th to hunt this deer. I said, every, every single cold front we get, every chance we have the right wind, we're hunting this deer. Well, it is October 6th today, first sit of the year in Iowa. This is the earliest I've hunted Iowa in like six or seven years. Usually I wait till the tail end of October to start hunting, but we got a really good weather front coming in here. We've got a, a really good buck on camera on the farm. Mini Mag is back. He's eight and a half years old this year. He's went downhill a little bit since 
the last I had pictures of him, but he's still a really good buck. He's round. He's not doing any anything consistent. I have no idea what he's doing, no idea where he's living. Um, we're just hoping with this weather front to get lucky and catch him doing what he used to do. I didn't feel like we had a great chance of killing the deer that night, but I felt like we were in the game and I thought we had an excellent uh, a chance of, of at least seeing the deer and finding out what he was doing. We got about 20 to 30 minutes of light left here. We had a little buck come through about 20 minutes ago. Kind of came out of the cedars and hit a couple scrapes coming up along this edge. And he went down to the pond and then he went out to the bean field, but been pretty slow but it's still it's still fairly windy out there so we'll see what happens the temperature's definitely dropping off these deer ought to move if they don't move tonight they're definitely gonna move tomorrow so you know that last 30 minutes we start to see a few deer and I am checking cell cams like just refresh 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 um, waiting for them to trip a camera back in the woods or on the edges um, where am I expecting them to come from and I'll never forget it, me and JP are sitting there, and I'm like, holy shit. We just got a picture of him. He's right in this corner, like 200, and probably 250 yards from us. But uh, where that camera's at, and to get a picture of him there, he pretty much has to come within eyesight of us. Like, I am 150% confident we're gonna see this deer. He comes right down the, the top of the opening and goes across the saddle and we actually watch him work a couple scrapes and he, uh, he passes by us at about 90 yards that night. And uh, I was just exhilarated to see the deer. I mean, to see a deer that old, um, you know, that was MIA for 690 days, um, just to be in the woods and, and be able to lay eyes on him, we were both jacked. Didn't get a shot at him that night. He moved by us out of bow range. Um, but lucky for us, what we noticed is he walked past two of my other tree stands. The only problem with those stands are they're risky to get to and they're risky to sit because deer can come by you from pretty much every direction. Going into the next night, I pretty much said, hey, we're getting aggressive. We're gonna hope to God that he does the same thing two nights in a row and we're gonna go sit in this tree stand I call the hot corner. I feel like it's November 5th, man. Mini Mag, the night before, when we were sitting in the cage, Mini Mag actually worked down the edge past the hot corner uh, inside 30 yards of, of this stand. So we are just hoping and praying. We got the same conditions, same wind. We're just hoping and praying that he does the same thing two nights in a row, hits the same scrape line and comes inside a bow range of us. Conditions are absolutely perfect. You can't ask for much else here in early October. Giant cold front, high pressure, bluebird afternoon. We're just praying this buck messes up and does what he did last night. So we go into the stand and I knew going in that we were gonna get deer downwind of us. It's just how it works um, in that spot. You know, you can, you can play the wind for certain deer and then other deer are gonna get you. It's just one of those spots that if you wait for the right wind, you're never gonna hunt it because there's deer can come past you from every direction. But uh, we were just hopeful that uh, God was on our side and that uh, we were gonna get lucky that night and Minnie Meg was gonna read the script and it was gonna be the end of the story. So the night progresses, we see a, a few does, um, a, a small buck, and we actually had a couple does come out on the one side of us, and then we had another couple does behind us, and sure enough, before long, we had a doe get downwind of us, and she started blowing. And uh, I don't know, she had to have blown for 
She probably blew 20 or 30 times, and it was dead calm at this point. That last, probably last 45 minutes of daylight, the wind had died down to almost nothing. And uh, so her blowing, I felt like you could hear it from a mile away. And I'm like, me and JP are both like, in the back of our minds, like the gig's up. There's no way this eight and a half year old deer is gonna step out here when this doe is sitting here blowing 30 times. Another 10 pointer, probably a 130s type 10, steps out of the cedars about 100 yards away from us. And uh, seconds later, Mini Meg's standing right behind him. And I just, I can't believe it because this doe is on the other side of us. She has blown like 20 to 30 times. And these two bucks are standing on, you know, 100, 110 yards away from us, like nothing's even going on. Like they don't even hear the, the doe blowing over here. There's kind of a rise in the field. I made the decision to throw a grunt at, at the deer. And I was hoping that his curiosity would bring him over the edge and bring him within bow range to check to see about what was grunting over where we were at. So he comes, I think it was probably around 55, 60 yards. He kind of got to the high point in the field and he just stopped and he stared and uh, he was just looking for what made that grunt and he didn't see anything and he eventually he turned and went away from us. And I'm starting to think the worst, like we blew it. Uh, we just threw a call at him. Uh, he's on to us and uh, that's how the, the night of October 7th ended. So we see him two nights in a row. We see him on the sixth out of the cage blind. He passes us at about 90 yards. We go into the hot corner, get aggressive on him on the seventh. He comes out in a different spot. We've got one more night of good winds and good weather, so we're going back in after him on the eighth. Um, we kind of, we had a little bit of a wind switch, so we actually jumped across and we were hunting out of the other side, um, out of a different tree now. So this is our third night in a row hunting him, third different setup. It's about 6.25. We haven't seen a deer yet, but that's kind of expected where we're at. We're kind of expecting later movement here just because we are closer to the food tonight. And we can't see back where the deer typically stage. We did just have a small buck trip us out cam back here on the end, heading our direction. We get in there um, and we just, we don't see him that night. I'm starting to think that we buggered him the night before by calling to him. And uh, you know, the weather's gonna warm up now and I'm keeping an eye on the forecast. Um, I don't wanna go after this deer until the next cold front. You know, the next cold front is gonna be on October the 16th. You know, I get pictures of the deer, you know, on the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. Four days in a row, I had pictures of the deer. None of them were daylight, but there were pictures of him. He was on the farm, he was moving. I had a very, very good feeling that the next cold front, we were gonna get on this deer. We, it was just a matter of being in the right place at the right time. We are back on the farm with Mini Meg. We hunted him for the last time, would have been a week ago yesterday. We hunted him three days in a row on a cold front. We saw him two out of three nights. Uh, so this is our fourth sit on him this year, fourth different setup. I've hunted him out of a tree twice, I hunted him out of the cage blind once, and we are in a yet another new tree tonight. We kind of had it narrowed down now. You know, he'd, he'd been moving on the south end of the farm, but we had him pretty much in a 200 yard window where he was gonna use this lane to go to this field. But it was really a guessing game at this point, you know, how he was gonna get there. We just knew he was gonna get there. Uh, the only problem was, was he gonna get there in time? So it's another big cold front. The wind was blowing pretty strong out of the north, northwest. Um, 
probably 25 miles an hour. It was a bluebird day, high pressure, and uh, I just I just had a feeling that that was gonna be the night. Early on, we seen, I think, a couple small bucks, maybe some does in the distance, um, but no sign of mini mag, and we were, we were sitting in a spot where we figured we were gonna lay eyes on him, you know, a couple hundred yards away and watch him work to us. And we're sitting there, and as the night progressed, we're just, we're not seeing them. We're seeing other deer, but we're not seeing mini mag, and I'm starting to think, you know, if we don't see him coming from a couple hundred yards away, we're gonna bail before dark. Because if we wait till dark and he shows up, there's a pretty good chance we're gonna booger him. We're down to about the last 20 minutes of shooting light here. We can see so far to the west that we've made the decision that we are gonna get down in 10 minutes if we don't have this deer in sight. Just because I think it's gonna take him that long to get here. As the minutes are passing, I'm sitting there refreshing cell cams, and all of a sudden, he trips a camera like 80 to 90 yards away from us. And so all of a sudden, we got a dilemma. This deer's at 80, 90 yards away from us, and uh, there's a really good chance that he's gonna come up and give us an opportunity. To the right. Mini mag, right when I drew, he kind of jumped. Looking back at the footage, we thought that, initially we thought that he picked me off drawing, but I think it was just because of the high winds. He was kind of jumpy. Anyway, when I drew my bow, he went from probably 18 yards to 22 yards. Put it on the deer's vitals, and uh, I let it eat. And uh, I'll never forget watching, watching the arrow hit, it, hit its mark. Got him, bud. We just killed a freaking giant! <laughs> we just killed a freaking giant! <sighs> Dude, we just killed a freaking giant! Yes! Yes! So we end up, uh, you know, climbing down, getting all of our stuff packed up, and um, we actually just, we took our time with it and kind of just soaked it all up and end up walking up on this deer and I'll never, you know, you never know if you'll get another opportunity to chase a deer like this. And um, It was a pretty special recovery, you know, to, to walk up on a deer that you had so much history with. It's hitting me right now, like what we just did. scorable unless he's got something off the back nothing so the story of mini mag is one that I'm not sure I'll ever be able to to top you know to chase a deer for that long you don't you don't get that many opportunities in a lifetime to do so and as bow hunters we can we can only hope to uh, you know write a story like this and and hopefully we can uh, write another one here in the future but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the story of mini mag and kind of the saga that started back in 2016 and, and was fortunate enough to end here in 2022.